Yes, guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video for you guys. Well, I say video, we don't usually do this. We always usually keep it to stream content, but I was meant to do a FIFA stream today. We were meant to do the Road to a Win episode two, but my game capture still hasn't arrived yet, so we're going to wait another day. We're going to bring that back on Sunday afternoon, so stay tuned for that. As of now, we're just going to be doing a little transfer stream. Fabrizio has given us a few updates on some Chelsea players. We're going to be talking about contracts and who might potentially be re-signing, who might be likely to leave in January or in the summer. We're going to delve into all of it in today's video. So stay tuned, hit the like button, subscribe, um, hit the bell notification button as well to be the first to know whenever we go live. There's going to be a lot of content coming over the next week. We're going to keep doing the FIFA series and just hope and pray we can get a victory somewhere because like it's looked hideous the first four games. We're also going to be doing some Arsenal previews. I'm going to start that a little early into the week because there's a lot of content with a lot of um, creators that we could get into within the next week. So stay tuned for that as well. But for today, we're just going to be keeping it Chelsea. We're just going to be talking transfers and talking contracts as well. We're going to start off with Trevor Chalaber because Fabrizio has given us a little update on his situation. And he says Trevor Chalaber is leaving Chelsea in January. It's time to go. He wants to play regularly. Guys, qu quoting Claude. Big up Claude. Rest in peace as always. Absolute king. But in terms of Chalaber, this has kind of had an air of inevitability about it. Like it's a shame it's ending this way. I've said it the whole summer. The guy's worked very hard to get to where he is. And he's been a dependable squad player for the best part of two seasons for us. Hell, there was periods where he was our best centre-back. Which feels insane to say now with Trevor Chalaba. But he was very consistent. Eight times out of ten, you get a very good performance from him. He's turned up in big games for us as well. Carabao Cup final for one. Um, which one as well? Juventus at home, another one. Multiple good performances against big six teams in the Premier League too. It's a shame that it's ending like this, but how many times have we said it this summer? Transfers do not care about sentiment. And in the eyes of the board, Trevor Chalaber is just straight profit on the FFP books because for a player of his level, respectfully, it makes more sense to sell him rather than to keep him in terms of value, in terms of money that you could potentially make. And as much as I would like to keep him, I get it. And especially with this year, the lack of minutes, the lack of European football, the transfer of Axel de Sassi that nobody really expected, and how well he's been for us since he joined the Premier League. There's just no route into the first team for him here. And we need to just try and find a way to get rid. I think from this update, the only thing that seems a little bit clear is that now Chalaber is just, he just wants to go. Like, he needs to get game time, he needs to develop, he wants to leave if it's on loan, if it's a permanent transfer. Maybe he's going to be a bit lenient to the, to the level of club if it's a loan offer as well. That's the only thing you can really get from um, this report from Fabrizio. But we did actively try to sell him all summer. All we got was Bayern Munich who wanted to take him on loan, which obviously didn't suit what we were looking for at the time. Inter Milan, who massively undervalued him. And Nottingham Forest, who I think tried to come in for him on deadline day. But Chalaba didn't want to go there. Which I understand. The guy's got Bayern Munich and Inter Milan sniffing around him. He can easily go and play for a club in Europe. He doesn't need to settle for Nottingham Forest. Respectfully. We've got to call it what it is. Like, he's better, he's better off waiting and being patient. But in terms of the club... I get us not wanting to loan him out initially because it doesn't really do anything for us in the grand scheme of things. But now, now we need to loan him. We have him valued at 50 million. That was the valuation from the summer. And it doesn't make sense to do that now. I understand us trying to do that in the summer because it made sense with Mount and Havertz. You eventually got that money for them. So I get you doing that for Conor Gallagher. You asked for 50 million for him. Trevor Chalaber, you asked for 50 million for him. But at the same time, all of them, not even all of them, Mount and Havertz were at least playing regular game time. So you could at least put them at that level and say, 
We play them every week. We value them. We show that with the amount of game time we give them. This is how much we're looking for him. Chalaba is rotting on the bench. He's got no game time. He's got no sharpness. That will decrease his value in the eyes of buyers. So with that in mind, why it shouldn't still be at 50 million. We have to lower that down. This, you've got to be looking at about 35 million Maybe 40 if you really want to push or maybe add the extra 5 million in add-ons or something like that. But realistically, you're not getting 50 million for him. Bayern Munich might come in for him again. There has been talks between Chalaber and Bayern since the summer window. But they're not going to come in for 50 million pounds for a guy that respectfully is going to be a bench warmer for them. They already have De Ligt. They already have Upper Meccano. They already have Kim Min Jae. He's not starting over any of them. So he's going to be a bench option. If he's going to be a bench option, they're not going to spend 50 million on him. It's as simple as that. We're going to have to lower our valuation if we really want to get rid of him. Or you're going to have to accept a short loan and see if you can get that money again in the summer. But that's going to be another year. I was going to say it was another year off his contract, but he signed a six-year contract. So that doesn't really make a difference for us anyway. Maybe that is the reason as well that we have the price tag up so high. But realistically, you're not going to get that amount for him. Not with the lack of minutes that he's getting right now. You're going to have to lower that valuation if you want to get him off the books. So that's going to have to be a situation for Chelsea to sort out. In terms of Ian Matson, we're hearing the same updates from him. He needs to extend his contract or he could be sold in January. And this will continue to drag till January, but... Other than the Carabao Cup, his opportunities are just very limited. He's the first choice left winger behind Mudrick, behind Sterling. He's the first choice attacking midfielder behind Gallagher and behind Palmer. Hell, maybe even Sterling in that position too. And he's the fourth choice right winger option behind Palmer, Sterling and Nonny. He's the third, cho he's the third choice left back option if he's even being considered for that position. And he's an emergency right back option, but we even put Cucurella there over him. So there's just no real pathway into the team for him. Now, if we win the Carabao Cup, maybe he signs. But he has to sign before then or we're probably going to try to sell him. I, I don't know. Because all I see with him is bench minutes. And I think there might be an extra year in his contract based on appearances. But he doesn't look anywhere close to reaching that right now. So I don't know what's going to happen with him. Because other than minutes off the bench... I don't see where he's going to get league minutes from unless we go into another injury crisis. Maybe he is going to end up leaving. Barcelona have looked at him. They've been following him over the last couple of weeks. I think there was rumours of Manchester City interest as well. And it's annoying because I know he's going to go there and he's going to do well. But I also understand how limited his route is into the team right now. This is why we really should have made Europe last season. Even some conference league um, games would have been fine. You could just throw all those Conference League games to the likes of a Chalaba, likes of Matson, likes of Ugo Chukwu, um, Broja, and they can all grow and develop in that league while you handle your situations in the Premier League. We weren't even good enough to do that because the bozos that we had last season, though, and it's so frustrating. We need to get back into Europe next season. We have to. Under any any and all circumstances, we have to get back into Europe. We'll see what happens, though. There's also a few other contracts who could be expiring soon. Thiago Silva. There was rumours of him potentially re um, opening talks over re-signing a contract. But I think it's too early for that, personally. Like, figure out our situation. Figure out where our centre-backs are in terms of development. Maybe if we're in Europe next season, it would be good to have him in for those sorts of games. But there'll also be another year for him. I think we should phase him out slowly. I don't think we need to kick him out in a year's time. If he was happy to be a rotated player and to potentially still compete, but not be a priority player for us like he was the last few years, I'd have no issue with him re-signing. Like, I, I still think it would be good to keep him around the team for the younger players to learn something off. But we would need to know what he wants. It's still the last few years of his career. He might still want more game time. And if that's the case, then we might need to have an uncomfortable conversation. But I just don't think we need to be having the contract talks to Silva now. For a player of his age, you make that decision later on into the season. Where you have a clear idea of where this guy's at and if he's declining or not. 
Gallagher and Saar, their contracts expire in a year's time. Um, Gallagher, I know, wants to stay. No, no, not a year's time. 18 months. Gallagher, I know, wants to stay. Chelsea probably still want to sell him. I don't mind him being a bench option. Like, I think he's a good squad player to have around the team. But he's still not a starter. Like, he's improved, but as soon as Nkuku's fit, he's out the team. As soon as Labia's fit, he might be out the team. So, he's just depth in my eyes. And I don't mind him being depth. If he don't mind being depth, cool, re-sign. But I don't know if Chelsea want to keep him or if they see him in, as the same sort of player as Chalobah, where you're just not really that valuable enough to keep. But we'll see what happens. Saar, like, whatever. Sell or just let the contract expire and we move. And yeah, we'll see what happens with these contract situations. Chalobah's likely gone. Matson, Silver and Gallagher are the ones to look out for. So we'll see what happens in the next few weeks. But big up to everybody that's locked in. Let me know all your thoughts down in the comment section below. Let me know if you agree or disagree with anything I've said. And we will see you guys tomorrow. The road to a win. God willing. God willing. We get something otherwise. We're going to be getting cooked tomorrow. Like, subscribe. And as always, up the chels.